Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and today we are looking at a creepy story that has been unfolding on Twitter recently, known as Dear David. This story began with a series of tweets from a man called Adam Ellis, who believed he was being haunted by the ghost of a little boy named David. As the weeks went by, things began to get pretty scary for Adam, and the internet has been following his experiences with the ghost of David as they unfold in real time via his Twitter account. This story is still ongoing, so in this video I am going to relay the information we have up to this point in time, and then give my own analysis afterwards. So let's begin with a reading of Adam's accounts, Dear David. Monday, August 7th, 2017. So my apartment is currently being haunted by the ghost of a dead child, and he's trying to kill me. He started appearing in dreams, but I think he's crossed over into the real world now. The first time I saw him, I was experiencing sleep paralysis, and saw a child sitting in the green rocking chair at the foot of my bed. He had a huge misshapen head that was dented on one side. I did my best to draw it. For a while he just stared at me, but then he got out of the chair and started shambling towards the bed. I couldn't move because I was paralysed. I have sleep paralysis fairly often. It sucks. Right before he reached my bed, I woke up screaming. I had another dream a few nights later, where I was in a library, and a girl came up to me and said, You've seen Dear David, haven't you? I was like, who? And she said, Dear David, you saw him. She continued, He's dead, he only appears at midnight, and you can ask him two questions, if you said Dear David first. Then she added, But never try to ask him a third question, or he'll kill you. I was very shaken. Having two dreams about the same thing is pretty weird. Anyway, a few weeks passed without incident. Then David came back in another dream. Same situation. I was in bed, and he was sitting in the rocking chair near the window, staring at me. In the dream I say, Dear David, how did you die? He mumbles, an accident in a store. I say, Dear David, what happened in the store? He groans, a shelf was pushed on my head. I'm frozen with fear, I ask. Who pushed the shelf? David doesn't answer. I realise I've asked a third question, which I'm not supposed to do. At that point I wake up, absolutely terrified. The next couple of days I google deaths in the city, but can't find anything about a kid named David dying in a store. I even try different names, Daniel, Dylan, Devon, nothing. A few weeks go by without incident. Sort of randomly, the apartment above mine is vacated, and I have an opportunity to move into it. It's a larger apartment, so I'm thrilled. Another month or two goes by and I sort of forget about dear David. I think he lost track of me because I moved upstairs. But lately something strange is happening. For the past four nights, my cats gather at the front door at exactly midnight and just stare at it, almost like something is on the other side. Last night I got a weird feeling and I looked out of the peephole, and I'm dead certain I saw movement on the other side. When I opened the door and turned on the hall light, there was nothing there, but my cat seemed unnerved, and that's where I am right now. Dear David found me, I think. I don't know what to do. I'll keep you updated. Wednesday, August 9th, 2017. Update. For the sixth night in a row, my cat has walked over to the door, promptly at midnight, and stared at it. Okay, so I took a photo through the peephole, because I'm too scared to open the door. I feel like I saw something. I couldn't tell, so I mustered the courage to open the door. Nothing was out there, but I took another photo. Look at this. Is it just me, or is there something in the first photo? Right where the banister meets the shelves, hiding on the stairs. I wasn't sure if it was a smudge or something, so I looked at a second photo from inside. There was something out there. I dead bolted the lock and got into bed, because I don't know what else to do. I can still hear my cat meowing at the door. I'm pretty scared. Thursday, August 10th, 2017. It's been pretty quiet tonight. I'm going to try out a sleep talk app to see if anything happens during the night. I'm heading to bed, but the cats are at the back door. They only do this in the middle of the night. It's routine now. The next night. They're both there now. Friday, August 11th, 
2017. I used a sound app to record my apartment last night. It makes individual recordings each time it hears something. There were 33 recordings. Most of them are pretty vague. A couple of them are passing cars and the like, but there are three that I'm interested in. The first is a snapping sound of what seems like a single step. It's odd because I didn't get out of bed all night. This one is weird because out of 33 recordings, this is the only one that has a strange electric sound throughout. This directly follows the electric static, another snap, then I groan in my sleep. These happen between 2 to 3 a.m. I have no explanation for them. I'll keep recording and share if I find anything curious. Saturday, August 12th, 2017. Getting the F out of my haunted apartment for the weekend. I have no explanation for this. Monday, August 14th, 2017. So a weird thing just happened, take it with a grain of salt. I bought a Polaroid camera this weekend because they're fun and dorky. I decided to take a few photos around my apartment. Polaroids are stupid and fun and inherently sort of creepy. I didn't expect to find anything and for the most part, I didn't. I took a couple of my living room and bedroom. That's the rocking chair I first saw David in. They're pretty unremarkable. Then I went into the hallway and snapped a photo. The Polaroid developed completely black. I even ripped open and destroyed a fresh pack to see if it was just an undeveloped Polaroid, but they start out white. I also thought I maybe accidentally covered the lens with my finger, so I took a photo while intentionally covering it. The photo on the left is me covering the lens with my finger, the one on the right is my fully lit hallway taken just after midnight. So this could be nothing, I'm not sure what to make of it. Okay, here's my living room. And I'll leave that there. Okay, now I'm gonna take a photo of the hallway just to show you what that's like. As you can see, the first one has already developed. So let's see what this one does. But it is developing black. So I don't know. It came out totally black again for a second time. Honestly, I don't know why I'm still fucking around with this camera. There might be a logical explanation. Someone told me to take photos from farther away, so I tried that. Once with my iPhone, and once with the Polaroid. Left is my phone, right is with the Polaroid. The hall light was on both times. Why is it pitch black each time with the Polaroid? The next day. Folks had been urging me to get some sage, so I did. Saging the hall, and definitely saging the hell out of this rocking chair. Honestly, sage doesn't seem like it'll help much, but I'm open to anything. I barely slept last night. I kept waking up feeling like something was wrong, but who knows, maybe this will do something. The morning after. Sage did not work. I haven't dreamed about David in a few months, but he appeared again last night. In the dream, my bedroom was filled with hazy smoke, but I could see David sitting in the chair across the room. He was smaller this time, almost shrunken. He didn't do or say anything except look at me. Anyway, it, it feels like a bad omen. And that's all the information we have on the story of Dear David up to this point in time. This is still unfolding right now on Twitter, so you can go to Adam's Twitter page and keep up with his progress. It's definitely a creepy account of a haunting, and there's a fair amount of evidence to back up his claims. To me, there were three key points of evidence that stuck out, so I'm going to briefly touch on those now. These are 
the ghostly image reflecting in the window, the creepy audio logs, and the Polaroid developing black. The reflection in the window is certainly creepy, but could easily be a simple light pattern that people have read too much into. You can see pretty much anything if you look hard enough. It could also have been deliberately doctored to appear that way by Alice himself. The creepy audio is also easily explained. Adam's house is made up of hardwood floors rather than being carpeted, and often wooden flooring expands and creaks, which would explain the creaking sound heard twice during the night time. The electric static is harder to explain, but remember Ellis is living in an apartment building full of electric cabling to power the various appliances around his home. It isn't out of a realm of possibility that the recorder was simply picking up audio waves from some of these appliances. As for the Polaroid developing black, even though the hallway was fully lit, well that is strange indeed. But we have two videos, one where Adam takes a picture in his living room that develops normally, and a second where the picture comes out black. Because this is not one continuous shot, it would have been easy for him to simply switch films after shooting the first video if this is in fact a hoax. And that is the problem with any story involving ghosts. There will always be sceptics and naysayers ready to debunk said information. Adam Ellis's story certainly creeped me out, but with that said, I am myself a little sceptical of it being legitimate. With that said, I'll keep a close eye on further developments and keep you guys updated if anything of major importance ends up surfacing. And that's it for today's video guys, I hope you did enjoy it, and if you did, remember to give it a like and subscribe for more horror related content including theories, analysis and let's play videos, and I will see you on the next one.